All right, now the Mauritania's ruling party candidate, Mohamed Old Ghaznavi, has won the presidential election with about 52% of the votes. The Ghaznavi's nearest rival, anti-slavery campaign, Biramda Abid, came second with about 18.58%, while the third-placed candidate, Mohamed Old Abu Bakr, has polled about 17.85% of the votes. Now, the opposition candidates have rejected the results. The candidates have said that the elections were nothing short of a coup. The results are now expected to be submitted to the Constitutional Council for its validation. The Ghazwani, in fact, campaigned on continuing with economic and security progress that was made under the outgoing president, Mohammed Old Abdulaziz, who took the helm of affairs in a coup back in 2008 and then won elections in 2009 and then again in 2014 and the outgoing president stepped aside after two five-year terms. Now, since independence from France in the year 1960, this was the nation's first election to choose a successor to a democratically elected president. Now, the country's first president had held power for a period of 18 years before being ousted in a military coup. All right, let's now shift our attention to Britain, where the front-runner in the race to become the next British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, is under pressure to explain the incident with the police in his London home. Now, the police were in fact called to Johnson's home on Saturday morning after neighbours heard what is described as a loud altercation between him and his partner. Now, Johnson has repeatedly ducked questions during a leadership meet in a town hall event in Birmingham when he was questioned by a journalist about the incident. Now, Johnson said that people want to hear his plans for the country and the party and not necessarily as to any altercation that he might have had in his personal life. Maybe people are entitled to ask about uh, me and, and my uh, determination, my character, and, and, and uh, what I want to do for the, for the country. And uh, let me just tell you that when I make a promise in politics about what I'm going to do, I keep that promise and I deliver. You avoided delivered. my question. Uh, well, I, I told you I was, going to, I was going to tell the good folk who have come here about, you asked about my character actually, I'm not avoiding your question, you asked a very direct question about my character, and what well, I'm telling right, well, you let me put it uh, what I'm way. telling you let is me put it when it comes to does, does when a person's it comes to private delivering life on have my any promises, bearing on their ability to do the to job as Prime Minister? delivering promises uh, and when you look at my determination to deliver for people who vote for me, and it was broadly look, speaking I don't a golden mention. I, I think, and I think most people, if I can I, say, most people would really rather judge uh, my ambitions and my character and my program by what I know what they want office. to know is all right so that is uh, the way in which Boris Johnson of course ducked the questions that were asked him of what in fact had taken place at his residence along with his partner now a poll conducted on Saturday has shown that the support for Boris Johnson has fallen sharply following the incident his eight-point lead earlier in the week had fallen to just about three points behind Jeremy Hunt by Saturday morning now, amongst the Tory voters, Johnson's lead has slumped from 27% to 11% in the same period.